Hi, good morning, everybody. I am Magir Arutran. Uh, to introduce about myself, uh, I have a qualified cast accountant. I completed my ICWA and having 11 plus years of experience. Out of 11 years, uh, nine years in IT, uh, all the nine years in ERP, ERP applications. I have worked in uh, all phases of the project, like uh, starting from implementation, upgrade, and support, till now I completed three end to end uh, implementations of Fusion applications. We started uh, implementing Fusion application way back from 2011. Uh, that's that's a 11, 12. So that's a beta version. So uh, the US uh, restaurant chain industry uh, implemented the Oracle uh, Fusion application, the first version, first end-to-end -end, uh, site. So we worked in that project. So we are the pioneer for the Fusion application. In today's uh, demo session, I'm going to cover uh, just an introduction on Oracle Cloud and what are different types of cloud offerings and what is the architecture and what is the design begin Fusion and the fusion offerings and we will we'll just see a small demo uh, in 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 instance and then i'll uh, give you a walkthrough on the course content so to begin with what is oracle fusion applications uh, oracle came up with an idea of merging all the best uh, features of other erps and then collaborating into one product so that's called oracle fusion so if you if you take fusion so predominantly all the concepts are derived from ebs and uh, they, they have direct few uh, concepts like set ID concepts and all, all the all the few uh, best features from PeopleSoft and similarly like uh, Sybil and JD Edwards and so on. So they, basically it's, it's, it's a merger of all uh, best features from all the Oracle uh, ERPs, Oracle owned ERPs I say, Oracle owned ERPs. And, uh, for, and they have integrated the Fusion middleware, middleware applications as well into the uh, Fusion. So it's a, it's a new age of application and uh, it is very user friendly compared to other applications like EBS and uh, JD Edwards. You don't need any special softwares to be uh, installed, record to be installed to use this application. For example, if you want to use EBS, you need to have the uh, forms installed. I mean, Java version needs to be installed, otherwise, it'll be facing issue. Whereas uh, Oracle Fusion doesn't require any special software, it works across browsers. And uh, you, you, can, you can use Oracle Fusion in any of, any of the browser, and uh, even the even your mobile phone and even your lap, even your laptop and even your uh, tablet uh, support Oracle Fusion uh, applications. So without any issues, you can able to access the application across uh, devices and across browsers. Coming up to the different kinds of uh, cloud offering, we'll first see on-premise. So traditionally, all, all these softwares are on-premise, and we have to. Uh, purchase uh, uh, racks, I mean, purchase servers, and we have to install in, install in-house. Uh, and uh, there, there are pros and cons and cons in on-premise uh, applications as well. So for example, uh, we will first see the cons. So the cons in on-premise application, what are the cons? The cons will be the high maintenance cost. And uh, it, it, it is high, high risk of uh, data theft as well, because even though it is it, data is secured with us, there is a possibility of high data risk. Data risk is also involved in uh, there will be so many hacking uh, th threats are there. So th these are the uh, drawbacks of uh, on-premise application. I mean, the traditional old age uh, way. So uh, the new age is the cloud uh, offerings. If you say cloud offerings, there are three types of cloud offerings which are which is available in the market. That is IaaS, IaaS, and PaaS and SaaS. So Oracle Fusion comes in uh, SaaS offering. So we'll say one by one, what is uh, IaaS, what is SaaS, and what is PaaS. So if you take uh, IaaS, that means IaaS. So the company will be providing you the infrastructure. So they'll be providing you just the infrastructure. You have to install your own uh, application. You have to install your own uh, load runner. You have to install your own database server, et cetera. So just the infrastructure has been provided you by the uh, service provider. I mean, there, are, there are so many examples for it. Even Amazon is providing uh, the, the uh, infra infrastructure service. All, all, the, all the major cloud computing uh, companies are providing these offerings. So they will be providing just the infrastructure and you have to do your own uh, you have to do your own OS installation you have to do your middleware installation the runtime the data and application so everything you have to do they will be just providing you the storage facility and they will be just providing you the service and networking uh, things and what is uh, pass pass is a platform as a service so in platform as a service so in, in addition to the infrastructure uh, the service provider will provide you the uh, OS middleware and runtime as well 
So you just need to install your uh, application and then your data. Uh, for example, uh, I, I, in, in the upcoming slides, I will uh, tell you why PaaS is required uh, in addition to SaaS. So uh, we, we, are, we are going to cover that. So as of now, you, you just understand that um, the difference between IaaS and SaaS PaaS is that in IaaS, the service provider will give you just the infrastructure, whereas you, on top of the infrastructure, you have to do everything. You have to do your own, uh, you have to uh, decide on your own uh, operating system. You have to decide on your own middleware and runtime data, etc., cetera, uh, application, et cetera. Whereas in PaaS, uh, in addition to the infrastructure, the uh, service provider is giving you the OS, middleware, and runtime as well. So you have to just uh, install the applications. And in SaaS, the software as a service. So everything has been provided by the service provider itself. So end to end, end to end is managed by the service provider. You just need to pay the fee, uh, license fee, and then start using the software straight away. There are no implications at all. There are no maintenance cost. So as we have already covered, and what is pass? So uh, in pass, you can, in addition to the SaaS software, that is Fusion uh, Cloud software, if, if you want to customize it, if if we want to integrate, if you want to do a complex integration with other systems, then pass is required. Then you have to use the other softwares like Oracle uh, in, in the integration service and like OSC, and you have to use the other softwares to integrate with Fusion. So and and or else if you want to have a for, for example, take an example, uh, take an example of the uh, maybe the MIGD, okay. So the MIGD will have the PUO system. That means point of sales system. So they will be, uh, they, 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 they will have a point of, a point of sales system that should be integrated with your Fusion. So in that case, you can uh, go, it, that, that has to happen in real time. If that has to happen in real time, then you have to go for uh, SaaS application for, the, for this integration. Okay, so the Fusion will be deployed in SaaS and you have to build your, uh, you have to build your integration on uh, PaaS and then that has to be integrated with Fusion. And what is SaaS? So in SaaS, everything will be provided by the service uh, provider itself. So the it, 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 so he he will do the maintenance. So we no need to do anything. We just pay the license fee, just procure the software, and started using it. Start using it. That's all. And uh, so it is hosted over internet. Uh, no no special softwares are uh, required. And uh, they, they will be providing you the user ID and software. You will be started using it straight away and start implementing the software. Okay. But the SaaS, in SaaS, we, we, it is restricted. I mean, customizations are restricted. It is very controlled. Okay. The customizations allowed, the, I mean, very, very minimal customizations are allowed. Like uh, if, if you, maybe new fields can be added in the page, like DFF. And you can change the page of a color. Like if you want to hide a field, you can do. If you want to make a field mandatory, you can do all those small uh, kind of uh, changes in SaaS. But the major customizations are not allowed. But for, for example, if you want to build a new page and you want to integrate that with Diffusion, uh, that is not allowed in uh, SaaS. For that, you need to have a PaaS application installed. And through that PaaS application, we can build the uh, extension extensions like new pages. And then that can be integrated with Fusion. That is possible. Whereas uh, if, if you purchase only SaaS, those kind of customizations are not allowed. So before going to Oracle Fusion application offering, I'll just give you a small example and why pass is required and why SaaS is required in terms of rice components. So everybody would have heard the, everybody would have come across the rice components. So I'll just give you a small example on how we are, uh, why to go for SaaS, sorry, why to go for pass in addition to SaaS. Uh, So offer uh, reports, I for integrations. C for conversions, and E for extensions. So we'll just uh, split this into SAS and PAS. We'll, we'll see what is possible in PAS and what is possible in SAS. So in SAS. So whether is, is it supported in SAS? Yes, we can build the custom reports in SAS. Custom reports are possible in SAS. So the Fusion comes up with an uh, 
add and call the fusion comes up with the BA uh, applications, the business intelligence applications. So through the BA application, we can create custom reports. We can create both SQL and PL SQL reports in SAS. Whereas, uh, so this is possible. Whereas in integrations, we have uh, REST APIs. I mean, the seeded REST APIs in Fusion, REST and uh, SOAP services. So through the REST API and SOAP services, we can do integrations with Fusion. Whereas if you want to do some complex integrations, then that like uh, if, if you want to customize a REST API, so the customizing REST APIs are not allowed. The customizing the SOAP services are not allowed. You can just use the seeded uh, features what is provided by the Oracle, okay? So if you, if you want to do some more complex uh, integrations, like I, like, like I said, if you want, to, you want to integrate the real-time PUA system into Fusion, I mean, uh, the PUA system in Fusion in real-time. So in that case, you have, to have, you have to have the integration software in place. So you have to install the integration software. Integration middleware software, you have to install those. Like SOA. You have good, like SOA, OAC, you have many uh, integration software which are available in the market. The Oracle software is still. So th th those, those will be installed in PaaS so that you can customize, you can invoice, you can create new pages like VBCS. You can create new pages and you can integrate those with the uh, Oracle. And conversions. So basically, uh, the in the conversion ex exercise has been simplified in Oracle Fusion. So the compared to the traditional uh, EBS uh, thing, uh, where you will write programs uh, to do your conversions. In SAS, in Fusion, in Oracle Cloud, it has been simplified into FBDA uh, files. So the seeded, F the out of box FBDA files will be available. I mean, it has been, it will be provided by default, it will be available by, uh, provided by Oracle. So these FBDA files are used to populate the data and those data will be converted to the CSV file that will be loaded into in, uh, interface table directly through the application itself. So there is no uh, there is no need of writing any code. So it, it, it will be very simple. If, if you get the correct, if you get the correct data from the customers and populate it in the Excel, I mean the FBDA files, the FBDA file is the file-based data loader. So it is Excel file, macro enabled Excel file. So just populate the, your data in the Excel file at the given format and just convert that Excel file into CSV and then just load it into your application. So by loading that into the application, the data will be loaded into the interface table. And from there, it will be migrated to the base table. So it has been so, so simplified. So for almost for all the main conversion uh, process, like uh, if you take uh, AP, I mean, the con conversion of uh, invoices are available. And if you take uh, supply, supply conversions, FPDA files for supply conversions are available. And then FPDA files of journal, con journal conversions are available. FPDA file for uh, chart of accounts uh, conversion and for a uh, chart of account hierarchy conversions are available. So for almost for all the for uh, for all the features for all the major features, FPDA files are available. And so the extensions coming back to extensions, no customizations are allowed except very minimal customizations as I said. Like uh, you can change the color of the page and uh, you can uh, make some field as mandatory and you can hide some fields and you can create additional fields in a page so uh, and you can capture data in it and you can capture additional data so all, all these small customizations are allowed like uh, maybe i can say like no major customizations since no customizations so all small customizations are allowed whereas if you want to build a new page and you want to uh, new page and you want to integrate that field in fusion itself that is not possible so for that you need to have the application. So for all these things, so these are the main differences between SAS and PAS. So if you want to do the complex integration, then you have to procure the SAS, you have to procure the SAS uh, PAS offering and you have to install the another application on top of PAS. And then we can integrate that with the SAS application that is fusion. And that integration is also happened through the FBDA files. I mean, uh, the, uh, the, uh, all, all the data should be converted to the FBDA file uh, CSV format, and then it has to come to the interface table. We cannot create new tables and uh, do uh, the additional validations in future. So, then, 
more places coming back to our fusion approach these are the total offerings which oracle uh, fusion is uh, providing okay so in this offering like uh, oracle fusion financial management oracle fusion hcm scm and in these things we will be mainly focusing on the oracle fusion financial management so these are the core modules like central ledger accounts payable assets collect payments and collection which uh, which is connected with both, uh, both ap and ar accounts receivable and then cash and expense management so and the common modules are related to like uh, intercompany workbench so those are the common modules that will also be covered in our session so if you want to implement a financial suit so the gl is mandatory you have to have a gl and uh, so based on your requirement we can choose the other modules like uh, uh, like payables so com some companies will not have the uh, much of accounts receivable in place i mean they will not use the end full full feature of accounts receivable so we can use only minimum feature so mainly all the financial companies if you say so these modules will be implemented over there like maybe some companies will not use expenses they will be using some third party uh, tool for expenses like concur or other tool for expenses so that can be integrated with fusion so so mainly if you take so these are the core modules like uh, gl tp assets accounts receivable and cash management so that will that will be the main module so all these things will be covered in our uh, training sessions so i i'll, I'll be giving you the uh, walk through of the course content so there i'll cover extensively what we are going to uh, cover in our training session i'll give you a small demo on uh, uh, how how the I'll, i'll give you a look and feel like uh, how how the fusion uh, fusion looks like and what are the what are the key like what what are the key insights in fusion uh, which is not available in ebs and which is there in uh, fusion and i'll just give you a simple flow of uh, just creating a journal and uh, just checking the accounting balances so let's move on so this is the this is how the fusion uh, screen looks like so we don't need any special software uh, to be installed as i said earlier so this is this is you, you just need to populate you just need to populate the uh, url and just enter your uh, user id and password just log in that's all cool. so now uh, these so these features are not available in ebs for example it the fusion provides you the so many dashboards and so many info tales so uh, this this gives you this gives the uh, much more enhanced user experience so for i'll just uh, let, let the page get so loaded yeah so these are the dashboards which are available uh, by default in fusion for example so these are the uh, journals which are requiring attention uh, for example uh, you have created some journal that has been rejected by your uh, approver and uh, th there are there are some error journals maybe it is not getting posted because of some reason uh, like uh, cbi errors or uh, some posting errors so all all those things will be captured in this tab the requiring attention tab so the user so the user can just export these uh, list to excel and he can perform the and he can resolve the issues and similarly it will provide you the list of incomplete journals and it will provide you the list of import errors and then the close status dashboard will provide you the status of the period status i mean the consolidated period status if you see the june 2020 is opened in uh, general ledger period is opened receivable period is opened projects costing payables assets assets asset period is not opened whereas the payable period is opened so it gives you the consolidated list so for the general accountant manager if he have access to the period closure then this tab will be visible to him so by seeing this tab he he, he will know what's happening like the, this this is the tab for intercompany transaction and this is the tab for the account monitor so we have a feature uh, we, if you want to track uh, certain accounts okay, and if you want to track changes in a certain account then you can configure those certain accounts for example the sales okay so the sales uh, manager or sales department people will be interested uh, so how how much sales would have happened last year maybe the last period so they want to compare against the last period or last year for example they want to compare the sales happened in uh, june 2016 the current uh, june 2020 the current period with the june 2019 the last period so those kind of things can be configured through the account monitor and this gives you the change percentage as well based on the last year and this year so this feature is called account monitor so the, so like, like this there are so many uh, features are added in fusion in compared to ebs to enhance the user experience so this is the general accounting dashboard page and if you see the journals page the similar dashboard is available
So the journal page has the journal dashboard and I'll just navigate to the period closure page and then I'll show you the period closure dashboard. So the period closure dashboard uh, have the close status page, close status uh, dashboard, and it have the outstanding subledger transactions. So for uh, each of your subledgers, for example, assets, it shows you how many transactions are not accounted, how many transactions are accounted but not transferred, how many are in error, and how many are in draft. So this gives you the easy access of, uh, it, it, it gives you, it, it, it reduces the efforts of period closure activity. I mean, the reconciliation activity. And you can uh, submit the subject period closure exception report from this page itself. So the, that, that report will give you the detailed list. And this is the translation status. If you have a reporting ledger, so all those translation status will be available in this dashboard itself. And this is the intercompany period status. So this is the, oh, this dashboard page gives you the consolidated view of the period closure activity. So the, so the accounting manager, so the internal accounting manager will know what's happening uh, in the month and period closure. So he doesn't need to go ahead and run separate reports and uh, verify. So he, 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 will, he will just all those details in just one page. Okay. And uh, this user have access to use primary ledger. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a simple journal. There are so many ways of creating the journal. You can create a journal in spreadsheet, uh, like the ADFDA spreadsheet, and uh, you can uh, create journals via BDA sheet, which I told you earlier. And now for the demo purpose, I'm going to create a journal manually in the screen, in the journal UI. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just create a journal for demo 01. You can create, create it for demo purpose. So the journal category, I'm going to use as manual, just for the demo purpose. And journal lines, I'm going to enter two lines. So I'm going to enter these accounts like office supplies account. So this is the office supplies account. Yeah. So that is debited. Debited. The 50 USD, and I'm going to credit the cash account. When I'm the, the fusion offers so many reporting options, like you can integrate smart view with fusion. So you, you just need to do, do the Excel plugin. I mean, um, plugin installation, smart view plugin installation, then you can build the Excel reports, reports based out of Excel. And so the FRS financial reporting studio is available where you can create the final accounts, balance sheet and P&L. And for all the regular reportings, we have BA uh, integrated with fusion by default. And coming back to the journal. So for demo purpose, I have uh, disabled the approval. So this will not go for uh, approval. So this will be auto approved. So I'm going to post this journal now. So the batch is select, submitted for posting. I'll just go ahead and query the journal which you have created. We have created a journal of demo iPhone zero one. Let's query the journal. So this is the journal which we have created for 50 USD. Let's query the journal. And it is posted successfully. So the journal is posted successfully. And the ledger is defaulted based on the data access set which was selected here. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and review the account balances.
So there are various ways of reviewing document balances. You can run a trial balance and check the balance, and you can uh, create a smart view report and you can check the balance. And you can use the account inquiry option here. Infusion, and you can check the account balances. And the Fusion supports the drill down. So you can drill down uh, from the account balance to the source transaction. So, yeah, inquiry on detailed balances. So this feature allows you to inquire account balances based on the code combinations. So this is June 2020. June 2020. We have an option to select all the accounts as well, all the company values, so that uh, so that it will give the list of all values. So now I want to query only the office supplies. So I'm going to give the particular code combination here. and then click on search. So this is the beginning balance and this is the period activity and this is the ending balance for this code combination for the period June 2020. So I, it provides the option of drill down. So I'm just drilling down in period activity with the amount of 60. So we have two journals in place. So one journal is the demo zero one which you have just created and there are already the other journal was created in this period. So you can just drill down the journal details as well. So you can view the journal page from the accounting query. So this is just an example demo transaction. So coming back to, to our agent of today, so I'll show you the course content. So this is the course content which we are going to cover in the next, uh, I mean, two, two, or two months or three months. Like uh, you, you will be getting some uh, 40 to 50 hours of training. So we'll be covering these modules, these core modules extensively, like uh, general ledger, payables, receivable, cash management, fixed asset. So the, the, the first will be your, the introduction. I mean, the, the first uh, few sessions will be the introduction to Oracle Cloud. The um, maybe we'll see the more detail about SaaS, PaaS, and IS, and we'll see the navigation basics, and we'll see what are the resources available, and then we'll we'll come come to the implementation uh, planning offerings, and what what is the approach in Fusion implementation which are following, uh, the all the industry uh, standard practices, and uh, then we'll cover the Fusion security because Fusion security is a little different from uh, EBS security. So we will cover, we'll be covering those extensively and coming back to general ledger, we'll be covering the enterprise structure, sub ledger, reports analytics. So basically these course contents have been, uh, course contents are designed uh, in, in, in a mind that uh, keep keeping in mind to, there, there are two things. Uh, we, we, we kept, uh, we considered two main things to design this course content. One is that uh, from the implementation point of view, so what are all the key contents which are required for implementation and that has been uh, included. And the second thing is the certification. So if you, if you cover all the, if, if you attend uh, the full training and if you practice all these things, then you'll be definitely able to clear the certification. And you'll be, uh, you'll be able to contribute, uh, you'll, you'll be able to handle the implementation project. So reports and analytics, budget and encumbrance, general processing, intercompany will be covered in detail and then the period closure procedures. And in payables, if you come to payables, we, have, we will be covering the expenses, detailed expenses, and then the invoices, uh, payments, reporting, and period closure. So every model, uh, rece receivables, we have a billing, uh, receipt management, and then rece receivables, and then the reporting also will be covered in receivables. Cash management, come to cash management, we'll be covering the manual reconciliation, automatic reconciliation, and uh, how to set up a bank account, I and mean, how to do cash forecasting, 
all the all the end to end uh, cash management flows will be covered so if we come to fixed asset we will be covering all the end to end flows in fixed asset we will be covering asset book depreciation method different types of like corporate book tax book different types of asset books and then dep how to depreciation method what are the different types of depreciation method basically this is an end to end asset transaction and service the asset implementation we'll be covering it so we'll be sharing this course content with you guys and just go through the course content and if you have any and if you, if you want to shed a light on a specific topic then we can increase the weightage of that particular topic so all those uh, changes can be done so i mean all those minor changes can be done and you can if you have any doubts you can uh, any doubts and if you want any more information any more demo sessions you can contact this uh, mobile number and you can send the email to this uh, email id so the team uh, will get in touch with you thanks guys thanks for your time see you soon in our training session thank you